We are live. Hi. We, hey, we are live. East Coast, West Coast. East Coast, West Coast. Did you have fun tonight watching that rabble rousing debate there, Suzanne? Uh, I think I kind of had fun. I had fun like taking shots at them and, and mocking and just, it was tough to, to listen to. It was tough to, to, to hang in there, but I, I didn't want to miss, miss anything. So it was, um, you know, it was a slog, but I kind of had fun. I sort of had fun, I guess in a perverse way, it was fun because it was just so, I, 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 I stopped watching it. I was like, what the heck was that? What the heck what was, was that? that? What was that? It yeah. Was, it, was, it certainly wasn't uh, over mo moderated now, was it? <laughs> no. I mean, it was honestly, um, I, just before we jumped on, I saw New York Times even said it was, it was a mess. It was messy. It's like, that's putting it mildly. It mm. was, it was a free for all. It was, it was what I really am still going, what the heck was that? What was that? It was so unprofessional so poorly moderated. Um, the, the questions were, um, had little real probative value, like the one, the softball to Pete and to Amy. Did you think that uh, stop and frisk was racist? <laughs> what were they going to say? <laughs> no. End of story. Move on to the next question. It was just teed up. Uh, it was, uh, I, I don't know. What did you think? Well, um, Going into it, I, I was hoping that we'd have kind of like the last debate with some actual substantive questions and, you mm -hmm. know, some some good uh, good responses, at least good responses from other people besides Bloomberg. But uh, yeah. going into this tonight, it was uh, it was just the moderators lost control of it in like 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, I think one of the things, firstly, that stood out was how Pete Buttigieg was uh, just talking over just about everything. Everybody, uh, every, yeah. everybody, yeah. and and it was it. He really didn't look good at all. It was no. uh, I. It was terrible. And didn't didn't it start off with Warren going going after uh, Mayor Bloomberg uh, pretty pretty harshly? Yeah, I think that backfired. I think she overplayed her hand. I think it was. It, I, I think she she figured. Well, you know that formula worked really well in the last debate. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to amplify it. And I'm going to I'm going to get. I got points. I went up in the polls for for uh, going, you know, going full throttle at uh, Bloomy. So I'm gonna I'm gonna redouble my efforts. And she overplayed her hand. She has poor political instincts. Is is my my perception of how she did that. The um, comment about the abortion, asking the former employee to get an abortion, uh, kill it, was that was even for, for, for Bloomberg, who I have no respect for and uh, do not want to see as a nominee, do not even want to see him on the stage. That was low. It yeah, was low. It, yeah, it was it was it was very low. I, yeah. you know, I, I I winced when when that one came out, uh, and there was a couple. Well, there were quite mm -hmm. a few wincing moments, uh, yeah. particularly in the first part of the debate. And one of those was when all of them just so brazenly attacked uh, Bernie Sanders. Bernie, um, it was it was nuts. But right away we could see the room was packed uh, for Bloomberg. Right off the bat, when the Bernie was talking about his health care and, and some of the other things related to health care, there were a lot of boos, particularly about how you're going to pay for it. And I'm thinking, wow, this is the first time I've heard so many concentrated boos. And then it wasn't just uh, Bernie that got booed. Uh, Warren, of course, got booed with the low blow that you, you mm -hmm. were talking about. So those those were pretty much geared, I thought. Didn't you think the, the room... Well, that was that was engineered, yeah. um, I, clearly, because as uh, I was watching the debate, as you know, I, I tend to comment. I post my uh, little my comments on my timeline, and I probably annoy a lot of people, but, uh, you know, they have choices on that. Um, so I'll... Two of my uh, bomber members, um, uh, I'm not going to mention their names in case they're uncomfortable. Well, actually, one's on the uh, one's on, so I'm going to I'm going to do it. Uh, Lois and uh, Chris, I'm not, not giving last names. They did their research as they often do, and they dropped to me in a, in a DM 
an article that showed uh, exposed the fact that uh, those seats at the debate were for sale. And the DNC apparently charged uh, thirteen hundred dollars. Was it? Let me check. I saw with, a figure uh, for. Low is it? I saw a figure for three thousand. Yes, I think they started for thirteen and went up to three thousand um, for seats there. So I likened it to the Super Bowl. There was a day when individual ticket buyers could, if they had the money and they 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 were lucky enough and they got in quick enough, um, were able to buy. Uh, seats to a Super Bowl game. Well, those are hardly available now. You're going to rebuy. You're going to buy them from a reseller. The, the corporate entities buy them up well in advance, um, and then they resell them or they give them out as uh, gratuities for advertising, client promotion, or what have you to their buds, to the cronies. And that is exactly what struck me. I said, "How much do you want to bet Bloomberg and you know the?" Democrat political elites, the moneyed elites, just as Bernie kind of alluded to in, on the debate stage when he was noting the response from the audience. Yeah. How, yeah. Much, how much do you want to bet that those tickets were bought up by the elites? Because it, the, 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 the audience response was uh, diabolically uh, opposite to what he experienced in a debate a week ago. Right. A week ago. Yeah. And he, he was decimated in that debate. Yeah. Yeah, it, so. yeah, yeah. That was uh, they learned from their mistakes at the last one. So, it's a money bomb uh, for mm -hmm. this debate, and I'm glad it's the last debate um, we're having, at least that I know of. Do you, there aren't going to be any more, you know, for the next couple of months, are there? Um, I don't know. Can't say if I. I would. I can't comment on that. I, I just like you. I'm unclear. I know they did say in the preamble to the debate that it was the last one before the Super Tuesday, the yeah. first Super Tuesday. Um, so the first Super Tuesday, Super Tuesday is what, March 3rd. Um, I think the Massachusetts, is that the one I think Massachusetts goes in that in that primary? Am I, or am I wrong? No, I, gotta, I, I think you are. I, I think I think it's Mass. Yeah. Mass is one of them. I think yeah. there's what, a handful of states, five states, four states? Yes. Uh, and... Then, yeah, Super Tuesday, that's going to be a big one. Now, Texas is in on that one, too, right? Um, I'm not entirely sure. I guess we're going to have to do our homework on that. I, I know that I'm planning on going to uh, New York City. I'm going to I'm going to meet with Nico uh, in New York and some others um, uh, for the New York City, New York State debate in uh, primary. And that's going to be, I believe, April 28th. That's a Tuesday. Um, 27th or 20 I think it's the 28th so um, I know New York is not in this first group of, uh, of uh, primary states for the for the first super, super Tuesday I think New York might go second and then I think the third batch which includes maybe Chris can tell us I think includes Indiana um, who's your state um, might be in that third group of um, of super Tuesday states. Yeah, I, I know that uh, Washington is uh, an early one this time. They moved it up uh, for our uh, Governor Jay Inslee. Uh, they got us mm -hmm. in there. We're March 10th. I think Arkansas and some of the other ones uh, oh, wow. okay. are, are in there. I think there are four on March 10th, but Super Tuesday is the big one. So that's, you know, other than South Carolina, next that's next Saturday, I believe. So mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that should be, you know, that should be. You know, telling. And we're done. And we're done with caucus states, I believe. Yeah, right. Yeah. I don't. Is I, it, I, there are there any more left? I don't see any more caucus states. My screen just flipped, but uh, okay. I, I'm. Thinking I'm just gonna that. look real quick to. Uh... Oh, Chris said Indiana is in May. Oh, that's a caucus hey, state. Yeah. Hey Jennifer, glad you can join us. Um, so yeah, so back to the debate. The other thing I was looking at was, um, you know, Pete interrupted. He talked over. They have the ability to cut his mic. They didn't. Okay. They didn't, they didn't mute it. They didn't cut it. They let him talk over many times. Um, the other thing is that the camera, you always pay attention to camera angles and, and what the camera focus on. So he was interrupting and he was talking over and the camera would go to him. So it, 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 they would bring him into the into the view where instead of keeping it on Bernie 
and and really kind of muting the 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 the, the crosstalk. They have the technology to do that. I mean, you can do that right now. Um, you can do it on your platform, correct? You can you can mute somebody. Yep. Yep. So, you can do so all that stuff. they chose not to do that. So, and there's a much more sophisticated platform with multiple input and outputs uh, through their system. And um, they continually let him interrupt Bernie. They continue to let him interrupt other people. And who is he speaking for? If you paid attention to his talking points, and, and most of them I think you could have anticipated because working up to the debate, he was floating them out into the public sphere. But, you know, it's all, it was all about that he's still hitting it on the, you know, Bernie wants to get rid of, get rid of um, Medicare for all. He wants to even exceed Denmark. And then they didn't let Bernie respond. But he's like, no, that's not, you know, when he was, he was lying about that. The man is, from what I can see is, you know, he, he's right up there. He's right up there. Warren has her distortions and her selective omissions. Right. I don't know that she out and out lies as much as, as, as Mayo does. Mayo Pete does. I mean, the man just out and out lies. He, he doesn't, he doesn't really care or he makes things up. He opines and he makes things up on, on the stage. So I personally find him objectionable on almost every level. I, I, I have a really hard time. He's smarmy. He's, he's smug. He's, he's, um, disrespectful. Yeah. Very, very. He, he's, he's overbearing in his challenges. Uh, and he doesn't mm-hmm. even give whoever he's attacking, uh, the courtesy of letting them finish, uh, you know, not their whole line yeah. of thought, but just even the sentence. He tries to cut him off and grab it like the math. Well, let's look at the math. Right. And he kept yeah. o- talking over Bernie. And it was just, right. uh, you know, he, he kept challenging him on that. And, you know, the moderators and the camera, you know, the, the mm-hmm. formatting or how they've orchestrated it. Yeah, it did cut to him. Um, fortunately, no more than it did because I, I think it could have gone a lot more, but I'm glad it didn't because he is, he's smug. He's, he's, it's, it's that thing where I do know what I don't like about him and it's his smugness, Mm -hmm. it's his arrogance and you know, how he parses everything as him being the be all know all on how policy should be. And well, he channel, he channel, he's trying Well, as we saw today, he's really channeling Obama. Yes. He thinks he's the the white Obama, right, um, right. And the white young Obama. Um, and he is so inauthentic on almost everything. I mean, it's like what he did with the, uh, I think these were South Carolina union workers uh-huh. that had a rally and they did a, I put that up today. They did a, um, they did a rally for their, for the union. I don't remember what the exact issue was that they were, they were really concerned about. But he was caught driving up to the rally, almost at its conclusion, late, getting out of his car, getting into the cutting into the front of the line of the rally and having his campaign take pictures and 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 basically project him as being embraced by the, the, the union members in the rally. And then what he wasn't prepared for was a complete repudiation of that effort. I mean, they called him out on it. It's like, you don't get to use us as props. Yeah. And that's what he's about. He's about the photo ops. He's about these talking points. And this is what I've noticed with, with, with the debates. They give him enough room to interrupt. They give him enough space to insert what sounds like really ominous talking points and discrediting lines and shots and jabs at Bernie, but then they don't give him enough space to elaborate it. And I think the reason why is because he can't. There's really nothing after that initial jab. I would have, in some ways, I would have loved them to say, okay, go ahead, let's let's talk about the individual points. Or for Bernie to say, why don't we sit down in a town hall, you and you and me, we'll sit down and we'll talk about the merits of my Medicare for all plan. And then you get to back it up with some real substance, not these cheap half-ass jabs that the, the moderators then run to interference on, give them enough room to take a shot, but then they shut Bernie down and they shut the topic down and they move on to the next stupid, non you know, inconsequential topic of discussion. Yeah, I think uh, I think I want to highlight what you just said. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring that actually over, and uh, so we can look at it. Yeah, please do. Thanks. Yeah. 
Yeah, let's uh, get that over. Can there. we see it on the screen? Uh, you can hear it, I think. There we go. Everybody's got it on the screen. There it is, right there. Hear it? I, I see it now. And hear it. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. See, they're running. They're basically running him out of there, and he mm -hmm. has his entourage protecting him from everybody in there. And look at him go. I mean, it's like they're just chasing him out to, of that place. Yeah, he had to get an escort to his car. Yeah. If you keep watching this, and this woman is protecting him. Seriously, dude, I thought you were this badass like veteran from 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 Afghanistan. He was referring to his. I'm feeling up here, you know, with the veteran, that's the veteran on stage. That's because they made sure to leave Tulsi out, the only real veteran who's had actual real training, who's actually a, has a leader, leadership position in the military. Right, For, right. Look, know, look at him, hur hurtle him into the car, and they're still going after him. It's like he didn't even say goodbye. Look at the expression on that yeah. gal's face. Yeah. I mean, that's just nuts. Stay back, stay back, stay back. Yeah, so, yeah. I think you uh, you called that pretty good. Uh, another another thing that uh, yeah, I'm going to let that finish off. Wow. Yeah, well that that went over well. Did you capture the woman that comes on? Was it just before or after from the? Oh, here she is. Here Listen. She is. Let me let me let me play that again. I'm play gonna, that. Let me get that volume up on her. She's good. Let's see if we can get that on her. We'll get that back. Hello, let's watch it again. I want to get her back on there and uh, listen to what she said. Good night, Lois. Hey, Stevie, I know you can't comment, but I'm glad you're watching. Yeah, yeah, she made, she made she, yeah, I can't get it any better on that. It's kind of like, um, yeah. You can't get that, you can't get that to play? Yeah, it's, uh, it's being a little stubborn on me. Okay. Um, well, um, if I remember correctly, she basically calls them out and says, you know, we're, 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 we've worked hard. We're a union that, you know, um, we have real issues we're concerned about. And I believe her comment was along the lines of you don't get to come in here um, and use us as a prop. It was it was along those lines or certainly I'd heard that comment. If it wasn't from her, it was somebody else on another another clip of that scene. No, I, and it was I, yeah. very well articulated. Yeah, she did. She she she, she got it done quite nicely, I, I got to say. And uh, but that's just part of it. The other thing that came out today is I. Uh, I retweeted that to you, I believe. Let me get my sound back where it needs to be so I'm not echoing. Um, was the plagiarism from all of Obama's speeches. You saw that clip? <laughs> yeah, that was, was that was scary. It, it was, was creepy. It was. It was. It was it was essence of Joe Biden back in the day, you know. He had to drop right. out of a race uh, uh, because of plagiarism and uh, this was just as bad if not worse than any of the yeah. plagiarism I'd seen and I hope people keep sharing that around. Matter of fact, I'd like to see it right now, but I don't have it at my fingertips. But back to the well, he yeah he, he um not only plagiarized verbally plagiarized, but if you watch him, if you, if any of you get a chance to actually study the, those clips, um, it's not just the words. He's copying. Notice his his cadence. Notice his body movement. Body movements. language. Notice yeah. his his physical his, his physical presentation. The way he holds his hands, he has been studying. Yes, this. he is. He is literally trying to reenact Obama. I mean, right. he's trying to be take over that persona. Right. Like, how many times did you see him hear him during debate talk about how we have to be calm? You know, he he's he's like the reasonable, cool, cool headed one. He's he's like the only adult in the room. He's not the scary one. Like like uh like uh, Bloomberg or like Bernie, he's that calming force yeah. like Obama was, that well-modulated, smooth, silver-tongued, smart, intelligent, um, 
you know, the, the candidate who really is, is properly groomed for this. Yeah, I'm the adult in the room, and the other ones yeah. are just children screaming at everybody. And, right. and, you know, as much, and to your point, he's not a good facsimile uh, or host for Obama. You know, Obama's style was certainly his, and it's well known. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, if people really look at Pete trying to do that, he, he doesn't get it done, is what I'm saying. No, and, no. And as a matter of fact, it, it enrages me that uh, this is passing muster with some of our fellow citizens out there when it's just so blatantly uh, false and uh, misrepresentation of, you know, sincerity or just being himself so well it's insulting i think as well to our intellect and to our senses and our and our sense of propriety as terms in terms of what we're going to accept from our candidates i mean you're clearly um plagiarizing the man and his words and you there is nothing in your record that shows uh it's actually it's actually a bit to me it's racist because it's it's ultimately tokenism mm-hmm. of and using our first and only black president. Say what you want about him as a president, as a politician, his policies, whatever you want. He's our first and only black president. And he's invoking him to appeal to the demographic of voter he's weakest with. Right. It's it's still to me a form of racism. It is. It, it's, it's insulting, racist, yeah. any way you slice it. And you know, once you point this out to people, um, they usually get it quite quickly. I mean, they're not aware of how tightly he he stuck to the the speech that Obama had, or mm-hmm. or did all those pieces of of uh, you know his presidency and possibly before. So yeah, it's uh, it's that will. That's backfired on him, I think, already. And I just want to keep pointing that out. Is, is uh, I think Chris said uh, uh, he's a lab-created uh, candidate. And, yeah, he is. And I was, yeah. I was pondering this today. A mayor of South Bend, Indiana, where did he come from? How did he get pushed into the presidential race in the first place? I mean, where did they find this guy? You Never know? mind. How did he get pushed into the South Bend race? Because I'll tell you, the genesis of these types of candidates doesn't just happen at the presidential level. It is something that they 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 school them on. They groom them for. Right. Even back to when he was, I think, 23 and he went to Afghanistan and he talks about his training in the military. Again, again. I saw an article in The Washington Post debunking his training. In fact, I posted it just recently. Um, about how he had this this truncated Cliff Notes Reader's Digest version of military training, and suddenly they put him in 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 uh, fatigues and camo, and he was deployed, but he didn't see combat duty. He no, he, he didn't, didn't. He wasn't over none in, of that. Yeah, none of that. Yeah, I, I read about that too. He didn't spend a lot of time uh, cruising around that. Uh, <laughs> you know, that t- no. treacherous area. I mean, could. What was the date on that when that you got that from that information? The, the Waypo thing? Yeah, it was ju- just this morning. Yes, it's recent. Yeah. Um, in fact, let me let me. I, I might be able to pull it up. Hold on, let me. I may have to get out of. So EPA. how how long how long text, uh, how long do you text. think he's been been groomed for this? I'm sorry. Correction. Not Waypo. Wall Street Jour- Journal. Oh, I can Wall read Street a little. Journal. I can read a little bit, bit of it. Good. Buttigieg's war and the shortest way home. Arriving in Afghanistan, he thought of John Kerry. It's a telling comparison and an unflattering one. Um, opinion, Mayor Pete Buttigieg claims U.S. started war in Afghanistan, and it goes on to say, when Mayor Pete Buttigieg talks about his military service, his opponents fall silent, the media fall in love, and his political prospects soar. Veteran, veterans roll their eyes. Now, remember, this is coming from Wall Street Journal. So it's a conservative uh, news, uh, newspaper or publication. Hold on, let me see the rest of it. Um, CNN's Jake Tapper asked Mr. Buttigieg Sunday if President Trump deserves some credit for the strike that killed Iranian Major General uh, Soleimani. No, the candidate replied, not until we know whether this was a good decision and how this decision was made. And I'm sorry, I can't, it's cut off. But this, I just got this, or this was just posted um, 
re recently, and it was an opinion piece, op-ed piece uh, on the fact that he's not really who he says he is and he doesn't have the experience that uh, veterans can respect, and not just you know a Tulsi Gabbard type, but veterans generally. And, and he doesn't have a lot of support from them is what it looks like because they know he's a poser which is the same thing he, you know, again, he, he cut the line. Uh, this is his, his, his modus operandi. He cut the line at the rally. He slides in and locks it up sideways and jumps out at the last minute. You know, doesn't do the whole walk, doesn't do the whole rally. He has not been engaged, hasn't done his homework with the union, but he jumps in and gets the photo op. And it looks like he kind of had a photo op veterans experience from the sounds of it or military experience. And there's a lot of question, a speculation I've seen about him working for with uh, McKinsey, um, and they're a known CIA contracting organization. They do a lot of intel community work, and that that's really why he was on the ground, as well as the fact that he was sent on a some type of backpacking trip trip to some country where he filed a report somehow that got published by the New York Times uh, in some country, some obscure country that he really shouldn't belong, have gone to that nobody, any normal American would not take a backpacking trip to. And it was speculated that that purpose of the trip was for reconnaissance, that it was intel. Well, I, I yeah. And I think that uh, this is the epitome of what I would call a setup candidate. That's why I was curious as to when they actually started grooming him for this run. And I would almost think that it would possibly have been two or three years ago, at least. At least, uh, I At agree. least, yeah. and I, at I, least. I did find that clip that I'd like to show everybody, if oh, you good. don't mind, and I'm gonna cut it over and start it off and see what you can hear. The way we when do we every other election, we're giving it to the person who got the most votes. Just a thought. thought brings us because together. This, now, country this country was, was built, built and it is a cools, movement reaching into and church basements and barbershops and in our schools, into universities and, and with our kids. Halls. And if the voice we can light change up the world, world then we can light up the city. city. Shining as a beacon, a beacon around the world. the world once more. And, and this, this is, is our chance, chance to, to answer that call. The way we when do we every other election, we're giving it to the person who got the most votes. Just a thought. Brings us because together. This, now, country this country was, was built. And it is a movement schools, reaching in and church basements and barbers and in our schools, and universities and, and with our kids. Halls. And if the voice we can change the world, then we can light up the, the city. city. Shining as a beacon, a beacon around the world. the world once more. And this, this is our church. Uh, that's that. that, that that's, that's telling, telling, I would I say. Would say. <laughs> that, yeah. yeah. Even the hand movement, the body language, the hand movements, the, the even the how he expatiates the words it's like he's yes. just so trying to i mean i'm going to flip this back so people can just look at him next to to just how they're holding their mouth and you know how their eyes are fixed and everything it's pretty crazy but, yeah his yeah. head his head gestures his yeah. hand gestures i mean it's it's we had talked about and we joked about it but we didn't realize how on the money we were how he was like howdy doody and he's he's there's somebody else being the puppeteer and i would suggest it's the mic and it's and it's the and it's the uh, uh wall street and it's all the elites but you know it's like he's so artificial he's yeah. so formulaic he's so he it's so clear that he's what he's espousing is is fake it's not even this isn't this isn't about passion no this isn't about belief no not at all i mean you know, last week when he walked out of that New Hampshire losing, he did the robot walk. He was chin up going down the stairs and he was just walking around like R2 or not R2-D2, but C-3PO. And, right. and it's like, are you kidding me? And there's quite a few clips that show him just kind of gazing through the clouds, trying to poise himself for for pictures. But you don't do that either. So I'm yeah. sure that he's got to work on that as well. But once again, back to the debate tonight, he was he was rude. He, he cut off people. He was he was lying. Uh, I and hope he did get booed a few times. Yeah, and he did, did get notice? booed. I thought that was terrific. He got yeah, booed. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I can't remember 
virtually anything Amy Klobuchar said. I did notice that there was quite an attack on Bernie about his gun position, and mm -hmm. I wasn't really thrilled at how he tried to parse the response about Joe while vo Joe voted for trade agreements and things. He didn't have enough space in that response to make his point, and that was a mistake, no. I believe, on his part. I, because you know. I don't think he did, but I, I, I still think it was at best a glancing blow. It's not a lethal one. It's been out there it's oh yeah it's, yeah it's, it's been addressed yeah. it's been yeah we is, know he was very candid and right. saying hey i voted it wrong i got yeah. it wrong we and, know and, and, and yeah. you know yeah. we all get it wrong he's cast thousands yeah. of votes and his current uh rating is a d minus with the nra yeah um and and biden i get so sick of hearing him say I know I can do it because I've already done I've it. I've already it's done like, it. Yeah, he's beating his no, chest. No, Joe, I you, know. you you didn't already do it. Yeah, you it's... you guys passed something with a sunset provision, so right. that that sunset expired when Bush took office. Right. Okay. So, uh, you know, he's saying, well, it was it was uh, it was you know because of the hanging chads. I don't. I'm not feeling real confident that they would have allowed. They would have renewed that. I don't know. I yeah. you know. If they really wanted it to be an enduring piece of legislation, why did they put a sunset provision on it? Yeah, I, you know, and using the hanging Chad reference, that was in what year? 1999, yeah, 2000? Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's that's a generation behind, and they're not going to pick up right. on that. And and I, I definitely, I had to, I'm sure you caught it, and a lot of our bombers did too, but remember when uh, Bloomberg was talking about how he, supported so many of these democratic candidates that won the last time around and he slipped mm -hmm. and he said i bought i Bo bought bought i mean i you know <laughs> that was oh, i bought congress yeah, wasn't that what it, yeah and it was i bought it? congress and yeah. that was talk about a slip man i i hope i hope people freudian hope, yeah it was that was that was freudian in the worst way you could possibly do it considering who he is and what's been going on so uh but I, the, the debate to me lived up to all the hype today. It was all about attacking Bernie. Yeah. I don't think it, uh, it, it lived up to the level that they wanted it to. Um, truly. No, in fact, I think it hurt them more. I, I think, think it, fractured it the, I fractured the centrist uh, more. And I think it's got, we've, it has gotten to the point where, in, in my estimation, um, I think it's got to the point where every time they lunge for him, it's like it's like that that coyote chasing the, uh, road, the runner. road runner. Yep. Every time they run lunge for him, uh, they look bad. They do. It look just bad. validates yeah. what we are saying out in the social media world. What we're what everybody is saying that spectating this with any degree of objectivity, they look bad. It just confirms our suspicions. It confirms our our, our what we have been saying all along that they are not interested in the resist anymore they had their they brought up trump but they're but i saw i posted a hill article today that said that the, the established democrats are basically in panic mode because they only have seven days to stop sanders it's like right. wait i thought we were to be supposed to be stopping trump yep yeah it's stop sanders yeah i mean it's like hello <laughs> yeah <laughs> You know, and what I, happened to the resistance? Right, right. And and to see some of the comments made by high profile personalities in the party, like I saw one this afternoon where <clears throat> Hillary Clinton uh, said mm. that if Sanders was the nominee, she'd support him, which, you know, whatever. But there were other we'll other people, you know, and I think your analogy of the Coyote and Roadrunner is great. And I'm hoping that after Super Tuesday, I can be going me me uh, for Bernie <laughs> uh, a lot because that's exactly what could happen. I don't think this debate tonight, if you want to call it a debate, um, I don't think it had uh, did any harm at all to Bernie. And there were so many gaffes by Bloomberg. Uh, I think Warren had a couple, and Buttigieg was outright lying uh, mm -hmm. with his gaffing. And Amy Klobuchar, she's easily forgettable. She's I, kind of robotic. She yeah. kind of repeats, repeats the same right. point that she did it in her little right. red basket state, right. wherever she is. I don't even remember where she's from, Minnesota. I don't know wherever she's from. Yeah, she, it's in she, she did it <laughs> in relatives. there, and if she can do it there, and then the right. homesy, folksy thing about her dad and this and that, and you know great family values we get it we get it yeah C centrist um you know positions that she wants to to 
make the make the connection with the centrist. Um, yeah. I wanna I wanna just kind of go loop back and and I'm, I I hope that Bernie or somebody advising Bernie uh, that they they do their research on this gun thing that you just you brought up about his vote. Um, it's important to note that Biden and anybody that were, was holding office on, on that stage at the time when Obama was in office, that Obama, when he came into office, he had a mandate. He had incredible political capital. Right. He could have put together because he had, um, he had the majority. He had the, they, they were the majority party. They had done serious damage to the Republicans. The Republicans, I, I know they had the uh, both the majority in the Senate and in in in, in Congress. Okay? Yeah, for two for years. His first term. First term, two right. years. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, two years. Two uh, years. Because in the midterms, that changed right. because of, right. of his attempts to- Two years. Uh, two years. Two, and, two, yeah. Yeah, the two-year yeah. period. During that two-year period, he could have done something about the gun lobby. He could have done something about the NRA. He could have renewed the bill that sunsetted and expired under Bush. He didn't. No, he didn't. They were busy trying to push that Affordable Care Act through instead right. of, you know, um, a public option, which we have to remind everybody that Tom Daschle and I believe Howard Dean killed that thing, didn't it lose by right. like two votes. And, you know, that was part I, I of don't thing. recall, but I know yeah. that the Dems delivered something that was carved out to support the insurance lobby. I mean, that well, was yeah, that was obvious. Yeah, they're 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 going to ha keep hammering. I was waiting for that gun mm -hmm. thing to come up because that's the only thing that they're going to grasp at to try and dirty Bernie's reputation with. But, you know, everybody's got to remember that there were reasons why Bernie voted the way he did. There were things in that bill that, you know. Uh, weren't uh, in the best interest of everybody. And can you ever see Bernie not voting against outlawing or voting against outlawing automatic weapons, uh, you know, and, and clips and all no. that stuff? It's not going to happen. I mean, he wants that too, you know. But and even, if, even if he did in that particular one singular yeah, bill. One time. Uh, yeah, one time, what, 30 years ago, um, it's because he's the front runner that going through with a fine tooth comb, you know, right. a lice a lice comb at this point. Yeah. Um, to find any anything to throw against throw at him. Right. And to his credit, he said, Yeah, I got it wrong. Yeah. I mean yeah. he he mea culpa's on this stuff. Yeah. And right. fortunately the guy doesn't have a lot he has to mea culpa on. No. Because if he didn't have anything, I'd be a little suspicious of that too. Everybody's right. got mistakes. That's what makes right. us better. If we're not able to make a mistake, the only thing that makes the mistake worse is not being able to admit it. Admit and it. Bernie, right. you know, Bernie flies high as far as being able to admit those few mistakes he's made. Mm -hmm. And you know, they, they they'll come at him with all kinds of stuff. And this latest this Russia crap and the cuban thing oh uh, that was hard to stomach yeah that they're they're really, twisting right. this really yeah they're stomach. they're twisting this all over the place i mean isn't the cuban thing it isn't the same exact position that president obama took wasn't mm -hmm. yeah so you know yeah. they're twisting all this garbage around i i i guess you know going into this debate i was really happy that we were treated to a Chris Matthews mea culpa apology uh, yesterday. Uh, that was that was really nice because uh, you know it just kind of showed what the mainstream media has been doing to the lead up to you know this thing. And I was surprised they didn't wait till after this. But I guess the heat was so strong on Matthews and MSNBC that they had to do it in a more timely fashion. I still didn't hear anything about Chuck Todd's brown shirts comment. Uh, or an apology from him or James Carville for, for you know, his Putin puppet thing. Mm -hmm, but it's mm -hmm. just, I think that's just energizing people all that much more, don't you? I mean, it's hilarious yeah. with the, yeah. the ridiculous timing and the things that they're throwing at Bernie. And, and what well, is... They it? look desperate, They, they, they look are desperate. desperate. They, they look fearful. They are. They yeah. look like they're in meltdown, meltdown mode. And that is not... That is not... Um, leadership that's not coming from a place of power it's coming from a, a place of fear it's like you know the old saying you can smell blood in the water yeah they're 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 not um i think what i find 
the, my biggest takeaway from this past week or two and, and since the debate and, and just watching these kind of the mashup of these uh, pundits on television is um, they, the establishment and the, the machine and the, the, the house of cards that we've been, that been encountering in the, since the 2016 debate and them throwing everything at us through, through mainstream media and the intel community and, and all the psych ops. When you get right down to it, when you, when you really think about it, if you watch the way they're acting, they're, they're betraying something to us. They're betraying a reality, which is they're not as indestructible and they are not as strong as we have been led to believe that I do believe there is, a, um, there's something to be said that there's a bit of a house of cards going on. That, well, it is. Absolutely. I will, I will use the analogy of playing Monopoly. These guys have had the banks and all the real estate for all this mm -hmm. time. And finally, all those little Marvin Gardens and Baltic and everything are starting to say, hey, Bad wait up. a second now. You know, we can't mm -hmm. have you guys be the bank anymore and own all the property. It's just not, not going to work. It's not sustainable. And we're not buying your bullshit anymore. So, and all the get out of jail cards have been used up. And man, <laughs> they've been overused they've been printing those yeah. things those those things have been counterfeited for decades with these yeah. guys so yeah. you know once again so, <laughs> do not pass go do not pass go and go. And, and and again i i think that uh, i'm i'm waited with bated breath for super tuesday um i'm hoping that we get a sign in south carolina that bernie does well if not win it He's uh, in the margin of error, just yeah, like they said, that latest yeah. poll is he's in the margin of error. It is. And we'll see how, how the ground game has done in South Carolina, other than, you know, um, messing with the votes. I, I don't mm -hmm. know what systems they've used, but I, as I remember, I think South Carolina's got like similar to AccuCheck or Diebold type voting machines, which, yeah, you yeah. know, is, Diebold is scary. Yeah, is, is truly scary. But again, mm -hmm. if it's overwhelmed, and I hope I hope they are doing exit polling so we can, you know, have pause if there is a problem. But I'm going to hope for the best. It's Saturday. And then we get a, a couple of days. We get a breath. And then it's Super Tuesday, which I'm just going to get up in the morning and turn everything on. And I'm going to be here, you know, with my lunchbox. And it's going to be a long Yeah, we're going to be we're going to be nonstop on the social media, yeah, and, you know, wearing our, our typing typing hands to a to a to a nubbin but it's it's what we do and i i can't disengage you can't disengage and and the people on this on this feed and the people that watch and participate in this whole dynamic process on social media um that's why we're that's why we're that's what that's really why bernie's up on the debate stage that's why he's the front runner it's exactly because of what was coalesced and, and grew and was energized and self-perpetuated. Right. It wasn't just Bernie. We self-perpetuated. It became us, not not Bernie. It, it we we did we really bought into the um uh what's his saying? Um not me, us, us, yeah, us. It we is. we took our responsibility for that and, and we are where we are with Bernie because we did that. Um, so I'm really, I'm really excited about where this is going. You know, who knows? It's, it's, it's a long, it's a long walk. Um, and we are experiencing for the first time um, and, and perhaps um, for the last time in terms of, of you know, first experiences are, are only first once. So, um, you know, this revolution that we're talking about, you know, our revolution, um, if this is actualized and we are starting to see it take place, um, how the story ends, we're going to have to keep pushing. But um, if this is actualized, we're going to look back on this period and every one of us uh, needs to um, feel good about the role they've played because it's a, a, a million hands pushing this, pushing this, this rock uphill. Yeah, it, really it is. absolutely is. And if we can keep getting endorsements like we did, and, and I don't 
know how strong, but in my heart of hearts, I think it was a very strong endorsement, particularly the speech, Marianne Williamson. She did a great job. That was very nice. And, you know, she really reached out to the hearts of everybody there. And she, I felt her passion. I mean, it's, it's when you can feel someone's passion because that's how she's rolled most of her life. And that's why clearly, yeah, she's, you know, she's always connected and with Mm -hmm. a lot of high profile people, you know, Mm -hmm. they, they, you know, give her a lot of credit and I do too. And I, it was just so nice to see her do that. And I'm hoping that when some of the other candidates who are still in the race exit the race, I hope they, and I'm confident particularly if if Tulsi Gabbard decides to leave the race anytime soon, I'm sure that she's going to come out with a wonderful speech, and I'm 99.9% sure it's going to be about Bernie. Um, and I'm looking forward to that because she's so articulate. She's she's on the, on the mark. Um, absolutely. Li- like her she or should have, She should have been on the stage. She, she really should have been on absolutely. the stage. Because she would have been an ally for Bernie. Absolutely. And, and that's the role she played when she would right. be on the date, debate stage with him in previous. Oh, yeah. One yeah. of the reasons they took her out. Well, yeah, she, they were afraid for Mayor Pete. That was protecting right. Mayor Pete all the way. I mean, I think mm-hmm. Tulsi Gabbard would have uh, made uh, ground ground out of Mayor Pete personally, um, mm-hmm. because we witnessed in the earlier debate, she didn't hold back. I mean, look at Kamala yep. Harris. And, you know, I I don't think uh, Mayor Pete would pass mustard with Tulsi Gabbard on a debate stage, to tell you the truth. So, no, I think I think I think that's one of the reasons why they had to take her out. Yeah. Because the M. I mean, if you listen to Pete, everything he repeats is really bodes well. It it inures, it inures to the benefit of the military industrial complex. Absolutely. Um, and that's and the intel community. Those right. are the two. Uh, segments of our of our um, society of our structure our governmental structure our our economic system that i think of when i think of what of what he talks about that's Uh who he's talking to right those are the ones that are donate to him by and large you know i know bernie wouldn't bring it up but if you go through his donor list what is it 45 percent, almost 50 percent of his donors are are connected to the to the military industrial industrial complex and the intel communities, right, right, and NSA, hello, uh, CIA, <laughs> all those people. Yeah. So, I look at that and it's like, so you know, that they gave him they they're they're doing everything to to make sure that Tulsi Gabbard, who has a foreign policy absolutely opposite to what their agenda is, is not on that stage because mm-hmm. she could. She could dismantle him. Yeah, she that, could it, speak to him and na- those yeah. issues. National security state took Tulsi Gabbard out of this uh, election. Um, they did. And and why more hasn't been said about the DNC changing the rules and letting Bloomberg into these debates? Not that it's necessarily been a bad thing, but it should have never happened. You know, um, without at least allowing. Gabbard and Yang and whoever else uh, back into right. those debates. You know, if you take if you take one metric that Bloomberg's already making, um, and eliminate the other metrics that the other candidates don't have, I mean, are you kidding me? So mm-hmm. I guess you know we've got about ten minutes left. I was going to ask you, why did they not talk about the Green New Deal or climate tonight? I think because the more immediate need is to take Bernie out. So I think that, you know, that was the, that or to, or to slow him or somehow throw so, you know, sand, sand at him. I don't, I don't think bringing up the green new deal is, is so, important. Enough, so what you're saying, one. you're saying the media colluded with the other candidates to take Bernie out tonight, instead of talking about the issues that the public want to hear about. Well, I'm saying, I'll put it in legal terms, it would appear <laughs> that would appear that um, the the uh, mainstream media, and in particular the sponsor, the host of this debate, CBS, CBS Vi- Viacom, <laughs> um, probably had great interest in making sure that um, those who could take a shot at Bernie um, to try to slow his momentum, to 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 bring him down a few few pegs in the poll. We're given the room to do that. Um, clearly, the audience reaction 
It was not natural. It doesn't make any sense. Oh yeah. Bloomberg has not won any primaries. He hasn't won any any delegates. He hasn't been on any any of the um, primaries to date. He has no numbers or metrics to point to for success um, in this presidential election. Mm -hmm. uh, his polling is far enough away from Bernie that he's a safe, safe, distant second at best in the best polls. Um, so, and he was decimated in the, in, in the last debate. Tell me, how does he suddenly get this vocal, almost equally vocal to the Bernie supporters in that, in that, in that debate audience? It's because the DNC and the host of the de debate charged uh, very high prices that that for tickets that you could buy your way into, you could buy access to, and that came out as 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 we know in the in some recent articles since then um, about the debate. So um, it was structured to um, bring home the agenda that they have, which is to they have seven days, as the Hill article I posted today reported, right. they have to, seven days to, to stop, stop Barney. Sanders. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So some I do want to do I did want to bring up one thing if you don't mind. No, absolutely. <laughs> um, I just think that it's really important. I, I was really impressed by I really liked the response Bernie gave it was a strong response on Israel and Netanyahu and his foreign yes, policy. Yes. It, was, it was it was so good to hear him explain and to, to distinguish and to separate and to hold mutually exclusive the issue of Netanyahu, his racism, his his um, apartheid uh, government treatment um, of, of the Palestinian people versus what anti-Semitism is and what being a Jew is, what right. being a good Jewish person, citizen is. Two different separate things. Yeah, and Amy Klobuchar tried to sully that, didn't she? Hmm. Yeah. I think she did, but I don't think she got because I can't even remember. Her well, response. it didn't. It didn't hit. Got, it was she like she, she. Yeah, she took an alternative position on that, but it was once again, it's either Amy or Pete or something. I thought, mm -hmm. I thought Elizabeth Warren kind of backed off of Bernie a little bit more tonight. She did. Uh, she which, did. Which, Other than that one comment where yeah. she said something about. Um, they say she like she accused him of lying about him and yeah he never yeah. he never get never got an opportunity to address it it's like yeah, yeah that's not going to fly after no, the last it's, accusation no, she no made not it. at all and, and and again i think that tonight you know if she had gone after bernie she would just burn up more progressive cred that she's already flushed down the toilet in my opinion <laughs> um i i don't know um it, who who won the debate tonight in your opinion um, the people who didn't watch it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. Um, I think Bernie, Hill, again, I, I don't always like to use the term one because yeah. I feel like, yeah. I always feel like it's got this, even if they open it, the battle, you know, the whole, the whole thing about it, it's like this, like, uh, it's gladiator a sport, sporting event. events. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, yeah it's, uh, yeah. I think B Bernie survived it nicely. I think he, they were glancing blows. Yep. I think, um, he came out of it still the front runner, and I think they wasted political capital. Yeah, and I don't think there's any way this. I didn't get to see the spin rooms because we came on right mm -hmm. after, but I don't think. I don't think the spin rooms probably got too much viewership after this debate because it was, you know, people turned off to the debate. Yeah, it was so it was. bad. It was and obnoxious. I don't know how they're even going to spin it tomorrow as having a winner or loser. Again, if you're going to. If the metric you're going to use of, of, of winner is Bloomberg had bought the house, it was at Bloomberg's house, and he got more time than he should have. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's that's how I'd look at it. I, I think, you know, overall, I would say Bernie won because he, you know, he deflected most of the trash tonight. He did. And uh, they might have kicked him a little bit on the gun thing, but I don't think it's going to last very long. It's not a big enough... I don't uh, think it's even going to, I don't think it's going to get traction. Yeah. I don't think we'll be talking about it even yeah. two days from now, yeah. even tomorrow. I don't, I don't think that was, there was just enough there. No, there wasn't. I think I, Bloomberg looked, looked like an idiot. Yeah. Some, some of his comments he made, he looked like an idiot. Yeah, he really did. He didn't have a grasp on the facts at all, in my opinion. Yeah. I also, I think that the, the math thing about saving the money on Medicare, I mean, it's a given. We all know 
that if you eliminate all the middle middle management and all those uh, different health plans, you're you're going to save money naturally because you're not going to have to pay the middleman on that. And uh, you know they were throwing around sixty billion and fifty billion and or trillion and four hundred billion and all this and and people unless you get into it. You're not going to understand what they're talking about anyway, but you do know that you are going to save money in a Medicare for all system. And that's well, that me- Yale, that Yale study just recently released. Right. Now it made it very clear. So it's like if Buttigieg or any of them want to, Klobuchar, any of them want to know the specifics, read the study, do your, do your homework, stop with the, the sound bites and the, and the, and the little jabs right. to get to score points on the debate and do your work. Right. Um, and then maybe show up for a longer term engagement. You want to do a one-on-one with Bernie? Why doesn't somebody host a, try, try to, some the closest contender host a one-on-one against Bernie on the facts. Yeah. I don't know. Instead I, of, I ha- yeah. See that. Instead of these phony town halls that they were having right. like that one last right. night, I didn't even pay attention to it other than I, didn't I, watch it. I did see some good clips of Bernie explaining some things. But again, I, you know, handing Chris, Chris Cuomo the, the list of how he's going to pay for the stuff kind of shut him up for a minute. And plus, it's on his website. And I don't know what they're talking about, this $25 trillion gap in what he's talking about. It, you know, we have some groups uh, around social media, the anti-Bernie groups that are always demanding. They want his health, health records, his doctor records, and they want to know how he's going to pay for it. I mean, that's getting old. I mean, it's, it's yeah, it's that it's that's another thing. It's, it's, it's only they're speaking to their own. It's their own little bubble. Yeah, it's their echo you know, chamber. No, yeah, yeah, it's their echo chamber. Nobody really cares. I right. mean, clearly, look at the yeah. numbers. Yeah, look at look at the, look at what the guy's been pushing for the last four decades. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's who I want for president. And this is what the mainstream, the elite media, the legacy media is going to be waking up to. And right now, if I were those guys, I'd start figuring out a way to how to work with Bernie. Uh, going into the presidency, um, you know, if that's the case, which we're, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping beyond hope that it happens. Mm-hmm. But, you know, other than that, um, I, I don't mind wasting time when I'm with good friends. Um, and it was it was kind of telling yeah. if you haven't seen Pete in in his all of his glory and and BS, then this was a great opportunity to deny it. I don't think anybody's going to get a bump out of this thing tonight either way. Uh, Bloomberg. No, gonna... I actually think I, I actually I'm going to go on a limb and I'll tell you, I don't think they're, they're going to get a bump. I think it's if they're some are going to get a black eye. And I think Bernie is not going to be the one with the black eye. I think his support is strong. Enough of his narratives have hit the mainstream and, right. are, and are shared across social media to not allow those things to have any traction. So I think glancing blows for Bernie. I think he stood in the, in the fire. Well, yeah. it was frustrating. Um, Biden was Biden, classic Biden. Classic there was actually Biden. a few times I thought he was humorous. Yeah. when he said something about yeah. Joe, you're not running I, for Senate. You're running for president. Remember? Yeah. That. Yeah. That, that, that was sad. That, that he was didn't really say sad. that there, but I saw that. I yeah. saw that uh, article or that clip. Yeah. Um, so I know that we're we're running we're running down on time, Rick. I um, wasn't planning on going on tonight, but I think you know we get so um, all of us get so animated and so stoked by what we see uh, in these debates or whatever that was. I still don't know what that was. Don't know what that um, was. <laughs> don't know what that was. No. Me me. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, whatever that was. Yeah. Um, we um we'll we'll tune in for the next one and we'll we'll keep the we'll keep the dialogue going and um try to have fun along the way, right? Yeah, I, I that's and it's always a pleasure. I, I love Likewise. the opportunity to get to talk talk with you and about these issues. Um and again our bombers and everybody over at Roar on YouTube. It's it's yeah. just it's great. And it is. We're we're gonna come on as much as we can, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, some of you might want to join us. Um, mm-hmm. We're always open to that, and uh, I, I do have to say that uh, Progressive Washington. We had a show last Sunday, and as the metric goes, we got a huge number of views. Uh, Good, so that awesome. Was, that was it you and Amber? Because I didn't get a chance to yeah, watch that it. Was, I, I, yeah, that resend was, me the link, or I'll have to yeah, pull it, pull it up. Yeah, yeah, it's I've, it's in bombers. It's uh, okay. 
But uh, Amber, uh, and my point is, is that I would love, and I'm looking forward to it, you and Amber doing a show together, and I get to be Definitely. the guy behind yeah, the curtain. we'll do it. Uh, it's going to be great. So uh, just uh, good night to all of our bomber friends and everybody over at Roar Media uh, okay. again. And I'm looking forward to the next time we get together. So night, everybody. Good night. On to the next day.